Alrighty, it is 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., and that means it's time for me to show you what is on my easel. Hi, Karen. <laughs> so today we're going to have um, Maria Goldberg McCradden. I think I'm saying it right. And she's going to be uh, coming up from Florida. I'm here in Maryland, and uh, it's a lot of fun that we can have all of us together. So I'm really excited to have Maria. <clears throat> uh, before I bring her on, though, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I'm working on, and that'll give other people a chance to get on. So let me show you what I've been working on this week. So this is this is what I've been working on this week. I've been working on um, a pet portrait. Uh, these are, this is a double pet portrait, and this is actually for two pets that are no longer with us, Allie and um, this one was, what was Pogo. Yes. Hi, Laura. And uh, behind them, you behind this, you're going to see my, uh, this is something else that I do. I'm also an art teacher. I work with kids. And um, this is an Astrodon. It is the state dinosaur of Maryland. And on Friday, I'm going to uh, go live on Facebook. And I actually do a live class called Fun Art Fridays. And it's for kids. So if you know any kids, uh, grandkids, your kids, whatever kids, um, you know, have us join, join me on Friday. So, and here's John and Elaine is here. So now I'm going to go ahead and invite Maria to join us. And she should be joining us in just a minute. Hi, John. And there we go. All right. <laughs> Hi, Gwen. Hi. So you have a... Is, do you have a, like an actual studio room there behind you? Um, yeah, this is, I, I actually, I call this my little hobbit hole. Um, uh -huh. It is, it's part of the garage here in our house. So okay. Actually, my stepfather's dark room. So there are no windows. Oh. There. It's, I can touch this wall and touch that wall. Ah! <laughs> So it's it's about four feet wide. Oh and wow! Twelve feet long. Okay. So, but I'm a little person. I'm only four ten and a quarter. Um. So it's it's the perfect size for a, a hobbit like me. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, you can probably tell by the cinder block walls. I'm in my basement. So. Um, and that's, I, I like to think of mine as also kind of like this little hole. I mean, it's in a big yeah. area, but the part I use of it is, you know, literally, I think, mm, eight by eight, something like that. It's, it's not, it's not a very big space. So it doesn't take much for us artists to have no. a space all our own. <laughs> yeah. It was cool because looking from my point, my, from my perspective, the room actually looks much bigger. So yeah, it's like you have like this expanse behind you. <laughs> it's well, you know, and there's this shelf that I created over here. Uh huh. I've made good use of this space. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. I've got a shelf up there with boxes of supplies, and then I have my tubes of paint hanging um, mm -hmm. from hooks on oh, different cool. fixtures over there, just sort of utilizing the space as best I can. Um, very good. You know, it's really nice. Yeah. You have Hi, Emily. Be, <laughs> Sorry. Very efficient. <laughs> yeah. It forces you to be creative even in your use of space. Right. So that's right. That's really cool. So we'll start out with what got you started with making art. Um, gosh, well, when, <laughs> My mother didn't know what to do with me when I was little. Um, she <laughs> <laughs> she consulted an artist friend of hers and said, Gretchen, I don't know what to do with Maria. She goes in the room for hours and hours. And I think I was probably like, you know, four at the time. 
Uh -huh. and, uh, and then when my mother described some of the things that I was creating and making um, out of cereal boxes and <laughs> just drawing on the walls and on, <laughs> uh, yeah, so pretty much ever since I was a little girl and was old enough to say, I need more paper and pencils, mommy. Uh, I've been drawing and creating. So it's been in my Very body. cool. Very cool. Um, now, are you, um, did you study art then at, at, at college or I know some people don't, they, like they keep making art, but they, they just don't right. study it. Right. Um, I was, I was pretty much self-taught. Uh, my mother's friend, Gretchen, when she saw some of the things that I was doing, she said, get her every art supply you can possibly get her. And mm -hmm. she, did, she just saw that gift early on. Um, my father was an architect and my grandfather, his father, was a self-proclaimed Sunday painter. So I used to watch him a lot. Uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, painting with his oil paints and brushes and things. And, and uh, I used to say, I love the smell of turpentine in the morning. And I think that that just came from being around my grandfather and, and his oil painting. And he was a self-taught artist. But by the time I reached high school was when I first had my first real art teacher. And, uh, and I, I still keep in contact with him all these years later. That's neat. Yeah, but that's I did, neat. I did go to art college. I went to Moore College of Art there in Philadelphia. Oh, in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Pennsylvania girl. <laughs> yeah. I've been down here in Florida since 93, but I grew up in Pennsylvania and went to Moore College of Art and, uh, and then studied art history, actually. So but it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> cool. Cool. Now I know you said you were a teach an art teacher. Is that what you did after college? Uh, did you yeah. do other things with art history? It was, it was kind of a windy road getting to where I was. Um, in 1993, okay. I moved down here to Florida and uh, started teaching at a Catholic school down here and uh, had never actually been in a classroom before. I didn't study to be an art teacher. Um, I, I studied art history and uh -huh. minored and, you know, I started out with, with art, but then sure. I fell in love with art history when I was in Philadelphia. Actually, I worked, my work study program was in the library at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And I just Very fell nice. in love. I uh, saw some really cool stuff behind the scenes there. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I moved down here, uh, where my mother and, and some of our family live, uh, I started teaching and I was basically thrown in the deep end of the pool, sink or swim. And I figured it out. Uh, took a couple of years, um, you know, trial and error. Uh, but I stayed at that school for 22 and a half years. Yeah. And very nice. Yeah. So I very nice. The school I'm at right now, I've basically been there for about that same amount of time. Actually, yeah. I've been there for about 20. I think it is. I think this year is my 22nd year. Yeah. Um, so it's, and it's you're uh, elementary as well, right? I actually do K through 12. Okay. It's a very small school and it's also a classical school, which means we put a big emphasis on art history. So it's interesting that you that you majored in art history because I, you know, going into college, cause I, you know, went to study art. I didn't know anything about art history, nothing. The only things I knew were things I had taught myself, honestly, that I had like gotten books and, and I would do like anytime I had to do a biography, I was chosen artist, you know, so then I would learn something. Right. But um, yeah, I really fell in love with art history my freshman year in college. And so when I decided to, to, to try to, I majored in painting, but then I got a, I went on to get my master's degree in teaching and I always put an emphasis on um, the history behind the art. And that was cool because, and so Becca loves art history. She's one of my students. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and I just love the way art history helps to tell the story of 
history, honestly, and also tells you the story of art. So it's kind of both things at the same time. And so I always, and the classical method tries to incorporate a lot of history. And that's kind of what, what I was trying to say is that it was a really good match for me. I had taught in public schools earlier, but um, yeah, I, I've never teaching at the school I'm at now is the best because I get to do, I get to teach the things I really love to teach and, yeah. um, and in all kinds of media as well. Yeah. I felt so. the same way when I, when I started teaching and had to, you know, find my own way, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cause there was no curriculum and, and at that time there was, there was yeah. nothing, there was no direction. And yeah. I was in a Catholic school uh, and, you know, without a teaching degree, you know, I, I, so I was like, you know, we were sort of like, we were the specialists, so we didn't need that, mm -hmm. you know, special certification, <laughs> Catholic school, you know, it's like, nobody cares about that. So, <laughs> so I was pretty much on my own, which was, was, was scary, but kind of neat at the same time. So I was able to really draw on um, my experience with my art teacher in high school Mm -hmm. and how he taught and, mm -hmm. um, and and just the comfort level that he brought to his teaching style. Uh, you know, I brought that to mine. Uh, nice. so, I, so I kind of feel like, you know, even though he wasn't there physically mentoring me, he was, you know, cool step of the way. Cool. So, um, let's talk about the art. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, let's tell tell us a little bit about your process, and and just tell you can maybe show us what it's on your easel, and you could just show us some pieces and let us see okay. about how you make it. All right, so um, I started kind of uh, doing some plein air painting um, mm -hmm. after I left the the school that I was teaching at. I did two years as a missionary teacher in New Mexico. And I was actually cool. an hour away from Abiquiu, where George O'Keefe lived and worked. Uh, cool. and, and a lot of people, some, sometimes they will liken my style to hers, where mm. I will blow things up and make it larger um, mm -hmm. so that you can really see the detail that I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so doing plein air painting down here, uh, my group basically called me the mangrove lady because it didn't matter where I went to plain air paint with them. I was sure to find mangroves and paint them. And <laughs> most people paint them the big long stretches of mangrove forest along the river and the birds and everything. I just sort of zoom in on some of it. So you can see this is a, this is a finished piece. Mm that I love that I just piece. completed and this one I call uh deep green velvet mm. and it's from my uh deep within series and mm. it's where I am doing larger canvases that really explode what I'm seeing deep within the mangrove forest the the bits that you don't see yeah you know so yeah yeah, and I love to work with um, the light and the shadow um, mm -hmm. to make those edges really, really soft. Um, it's it's very it's a very time consuming process, but oh yeah, but I'm sure it is. It's beautiful. Um, Emily said she loves how you captured the sunlight. Oh, thank you. and I I have to agree. Particularly, it's um, what's what's cool is how bright that sun is. Yes. Which, of course, makes me feel like I'm in Florida because the sun is really right there. And, um, you know, the, it's just, it's so magical because you, you make that contrast because that is really what it is. It you is. Know. And it, it's part of my process when I go out in the field is, you know, I bring my, my travel easel with me and my paints and everything else. And I'll spend about a half an hour out there just taking tons and tons of pictures with my mm -hmm. iPad or my camera. And, mm -hmm. um, and later when I come back in the studio, I'll organize those pictures so that I can reference them later. But I try and capture in the plein air setting, the start of a canvas. Mm -hmm. And then I'll oftentimes, you know, finish it in the studio. 
So this is, this is the result of one of those journeys out there. I did another canvas while I was in the site. And then this was another picture from that day. From the photos, yeah. The photos. Yeah, I find it really difficult to, plant, to paint outside. Um, well, one, I paint with acrylics, and it's really hard to get your paint sweat when you're outside. Right. Um, but number two, I just, um, it, it, my eyes have a hard time adjusting to the light and, the, and, and everything. And I can't always, you know, like going back and forth between the painting and the, and the canvas. I mean, I, I honor people who do it. I think it's great. And then they do beautiful work. But that is just not me. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's, it ain't me. Not for everybody. Um, it's challenging. And I, I, like you, like to focus in on certain things and, like, really pull, like, really see things that maybe other people don't don't see. So yeah. my landscapes, you know, my I do this. I, I have a similar, probably, it's part of the reason I probably love them. Your work is I always loved your compositions. And I also love the subject matter because I know what it is. I, cause I've been to Florida and I love the mangroves. When I'm in Florida, I love to go down at the end of Hutchison Island where they have the, um, the, um, what is that? Oh, bathtub reef or, um, um well, or no, the, the, the museum that, that the museum. It's oh, called, it's oceanographic. The, Florida. Yes. The oceanographic place. Cause they have a really cool path that goes, through the mangroves and it's like they're over your head and yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. Great, I, <laughs> great, uh, great images from there. And uh, a lot of, actually, this is, this is one from there. Um, this one is of the uh, white mangrove. Oh yeah. Now this is started, this is on um, gesso board. It's nested mm -hmm. panel. Um, okay. And uh, you see the flowers starting. And yes. So this is part of my process too, is um, I, once I decide on an image, I'll mm -hmm. create the composition, you know, based on actual observation and photos. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll edit out things. Uh, sure. You know, but most of the time, once I draw it on my surface, I oftentimes when I'm painting in oils, we'll start with the background first and then work my way forward in the painting. So the last sure. thing to be painted on this will probably be those little flowers of the okay. white mangrove. Okay. But that's one that I took a picture of at Oceanographic when uh -huh. and everything's uh -huh. in bloom. Uh-huh. Cool. Now, um, you, did you say that was aqua board? That one is gesso board. They're, gesso board. Okay. Yes. Now I know um, we. One of the things that I've been doing lately is watercolor. I, I've taken mm -hmm. a break from oil painting, and uh, you know I'll go back to that eventually. But right now I've been exploring uh, my watercolor techniques a little bit further. And I've been experimenting on ampersands, uh, clay boards, aqua boards, um, those surfaces, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Good. So um, I have a couple that I started here just last week, um, and this is the aqua board. Ooh, and that is really nice. Thank you. So this is, uh, again, from a photograph. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's just watercolor on the aqua board. And mm -hmm. the aqua board is actually, it's, it's just a panel, like a masonite panel. Okay. And it's not very thick. Okay. It's got this clay-like surface on it. That That's beautiful. Textured. So mm. working on this particular surface with watercolor is similar to working on uh, cold press paper, watercolor paper. Okay. So it's got okay. the texture of the cold press. Okay. But it's not going to warp and wrinkle on you. Right. Like watercolor right. paper does. Yes. Which yes. is really cool. 
but the, the, the paint going onto the surface is just so different. It's, it's just, it's like I have to throw away everything that I've learned about watercolor painting on watercolor when mm. I'm painting on this surface. Okay. And then the clay, the um, clay board, and that's this one, this big one that I'm working on. Ooh, also beautiful. So the clay board is like working on hot press watercolor paper. It's a which is smooth smoother. for those who don't know. Right, it's a smoother <laughs> surface. Yes. Um, so it's really it's kind of slick, and it's mm -hmm. almost it's. It's a combination of working with hot press paper, which is smooth, and fresco. The fres yes. A fresco surface, for again, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's like um, if you were to apply plaster to the wall and then start painting on it while it was still wet. Yes. It's absorbed into that plaster. Mm -hmm. You know, but with this clay board surface, what I'm finding is the lift out quality on it is amazing. It's I mean, really you can get you can lift out. I can go back in on any section here, even huh. the darkest dark and lift huh. out with a fine brush and some water and lift it out yeah. until it's almost pure white again. Yeah. Which again, for those who don't paint. Lifting out in watercolor is basically the way you erase. You use you use clean water and you pull and, and a dry and then you use a dry brush to pull right. the color right out of the surface. Right. And you have to have decent paper to do it, or in this case, clayboard to do it. If you yeah. try to do this on your cheapo paper, it ain't working. It, it's not it, it will it will stain it. It's yeah. <laughs> so that's that's really that's been a. a this, these surfaces have been a game changer for me with this because um, working in oils on mm -hmm. canvas or even on the gesso board, it's so time consuming. I'm, I'm spending like 30 to 40 hours on each painting. Right. Which, you know, just raises the price because, you know, I don't want to get, right. you know, I don't want exactly. to pay $5 an hour for something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so this is a lot freer and, and quicker. And yeah. So it's. Just and you still have a beautiful result. I mean, your, your work still has that luminosity to it. So, and you're also able to get, um, some pretty dark colors too, some yeah. pretty dark darks, which again, with watercolor, a lot of times people right. can't get those really dark darks. Right. Do you layer them on or are you just able to yeah. use thicker paint or? It's, it is a pro that that's the other tricky thing with the, the clay board surface and the aqua board surface. Well, not so much the aqua board, but definitely the clay board. I find that if I overwork it, and try and put on too many layers, um, it's it's like the under layer starts to come off and huh. mix with the upper layer. So you okay. really, it's, it's challenging in that once I lay something down, I've got to really practice patience and leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let it do what it's going to do and be happy with it. And yes. So that's yeah, it, fun. And that's definitely... One of those things where when people use are used to using oil paints, sometimes they get a little, oil painting people can be a little lazy in terms of being able to just manipulate, constant manipulate, manipulate, manipulate. I mean, sometimes people will just wipe the whole thing clean and start again. Right. Why? Because they can. Right. You know, whereas watercolor people they have to learn how to, you lay it down, you, you, you're patient, you have to work with the, you have to really work right. with it. Right. And so since I like to work fast and I'm not patient enough to do watercolor, that's why I use acrylic. Acrylic is great if you want to be fast, right. but you don't want to be patient. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's certain things I can't do with acrylics that I can't, you know, that you can do with watercolors. Right. Unless of course you use the, 
acrylics like watercolors, you know, like you water them down right. completely and use them on paper. Right. You can make them look almost exactly like watercolors. Right. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, so uh, one, of my, one of my questions for you before was, uh, a what is a challenge maybe that we've already talked about at least two different challenges you've had in a resolution, but I didn't know if there was anything else that you wanted to share. Well, I'm actually, I, I was thinking about that question earlier uh, this week uh, because these, these little pieces that I did on, on the aqua board, I'm mm -hmm. experimenting with these um, and I really toyed with the fact that I went into this thinking I want to add India ink to this as well. Okay. And, um, and I was a little hesitant and I had one piece that, um, I wasn't happy with. So I, okay. thought, well, I'll mess around with that one with the India. That's good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't like it anyway. You know? Yeah. I can't screw it up. Um, and, and, and I'm liking this actually. Mm. So I went in with the India ink with the pen and ink and uh, mm -hmm. some brush work and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but at one point, my, my pen went a little wider than I wanted it to. Okay. Which is what happens with India ink. You know, if you're using a dip pen, like, right. This is actually, this is the dip pen that did the damage. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and it, it just blotted out too wide. Sure. So I went, okay, well, there's nothing to be done about it now. And so I started going in on some of the other lines and making them wider. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a mix now of, you know, thin and thick lines that. Yeah. Which I think is actually better yeah. than if they were all the same. Absolutely. Honestly, it, it is, it's nice. They, they really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have chose, I wouldn't have thought to put India ink on it, but it, it's a very nice result. It yep. looks quite nice. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so one of my questions is always, what is a favorite medium? So we've been talking about different mediums, your watercolor versus your oil paints. Is one of them a favorite or? Well, you just, it is what it is. Yeah, you've got to know this as an art teacher. It, it, <laughs> when, when I went into teaching art, yeah, watercolors, oils, chalk pastels, things like that, those were all my go-to mediums. I love mm -hmm. working in them. Um, and, and in the ink, you know, but once I started teaching, then I realized I have to teach all of these kids pre-K through eighth grade, and they've got to learn all these different things, um, mm -hmm. you know, cutting and pasting and collage and building and clay and fiber arts. So I had to teach myself basically how to do these things. Right. I had never really been trained to do and so that I could teach them. So what ended up happening was I fell in love with clay. I fell in love with fiber arts. Uh, one parent asked me to teach her daughter how to do batik. And I had never done batik before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just loved it. I took to it like a fish to water. Uh, so I don't have a favorite medium <laughs> I hate to say that, but um, that's all right. <laughs> but by the same token, you know, I, I I do need to focus on just one or two, so that's why I have chosen oil paint and watercolor. So, yeah, and um, we we were um, I had asked you about future plans. You had some pretty interesting, I thought, an interesting plan for what you might be doing next with your, your uh, mangroves. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you just can't take the teacher out of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> once a teacher, I think, I, I think anybody who stays in this profession for any length of time, it's, they're always drawn to it in some way or another. It is true. It is true. So my, my goal basically is to uh, develop a um, presentation uh, for different venues, uh, definitely a presentation uh, geared towards elementary school students, uh, uh -huh. teach them about the mangroves here in Florida and the importance of them. 
Uh, and also, again, you mentioned the Florida Oceanographic, just down the road from here. I am a member, um, mm -hmm. and I go there quite often. Uh, I'd like to be able to, um, you know, join their, their volunteer staff at some point, uh, you know, <laughs> once lockdown and COVID has, you know, oh, yeah. we, we can see that in our rear view mirror. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to help them with their mission in, in restoration and conservation in this area and do some presentations there and work with, with that museum. Uh, there's a lot of museums around here. Um, and I do have a couple of book ideas. Uh, one of them, I actually created a poem about the four different uh, species of mangroves that we have here in Florida. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's, it's, you know, kind of a free verse. It does rhyme a little bit. Um, you know, so I have that poem created and now I just have to make all the pictures for the pages of that book. Yeah, easy stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that spare time. <laughs> oh, that's really good. How about some favorite artists? Um, yeah, again, being an art history major, uh, I fell in love with so many artists. Um, my daughter, Emily, is actually named after uh, one of my favorite uh, German expressionist artists, Emil Nolde. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Vincent Vego, I think, is at the top of my list. Um, I, I, I channel my inner Vincent every time I'm out there plein air painting, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, some of my other favorites are definitely Georgia O'Keeffe and uh, another German expressionist artist, Kitty Kolwitz. Um, yeah, and Leonardo. Uh, he's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice group. Very nice group. Now, if people want to see your work, where is the, what is the best thing for them to do? Uh, actually follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm posting more and more on there. Um, I do have a website, uh, mariagstudios.com. And uh, right now I do not have gallery representation, uh, mm -hmm. but I do have my artwork on display at the Guilt Complex, which is in downtown Stewart here in Florida. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. And um, so right now uh, I'm, I'm at a point where I will be seeking gallery representation uh, soon. Um, uh -huh. And with, with COVID, um, I'm focused more online. Uh, so definitely yeah. Instagram. Yeah, it's a great way to meet, just meet new people who might be interested in what you do and you have very specific uh, niche that you're working in. And I, right. you know, I feel like you might be able to market yourself that way as, right. as well. So Emily is asking, what is your favorite color to paint with? She asked. <laughs> Green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't too surprised when you said that. Green, and you, you get such a great, rich variety of greens. Um, do you use premix greens while you're while you're painting, or do you do or do you mix it all? Like, no, I, what, are, I, what are you using? I mix it all myself. I I get. Um, I can show you one of my palettes here if I can hold it up without it falling everywhere. Um, I actually get my, I've been getting these wonderful paints from the Letter Sparrow. Okay. He makes handmade, um, vegan, earth-friendly watercolor paints. Oh, wow. So they are in this, um, they come in these little square okay. palettes. And she puts them in these tins with this metallic um, or magnetic uh, strip on the bottom. So they sit in okay. the tin. And then I just recycle, you know, bottle caps and use those to mix other colors so that I have a variety that I can, you know, choose from. Uh, but I do use premixed paints, but then I very rarely just use them right out of the tube so to speak yes it, it's, yeah yeah no i i have to mix them all myself 
Yeah. Um, yeah, because some people will have like a whole range of greens that they that they use. And I'm like, really? You know, like yeah. most of the time I don't even have green on my palette. Most of the time I just mix it because right. usually it's not a large part of my picture. If I'm doing a large painting with a lot of green, I usually have a green, but then I'm constantly right. changing it with yellows and browns and whites and blues yeah. and, you know, just changing it up because – you know, green is such a complex color. There's so yeah. many different oh, okay. varieties of green that right. you can just mix green all day. Yeah. It's like brown. You know, it's brown is, the, it's, is kind of a similar. -to, I think my go-to oil paint color is uh, sap green. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. This, yeah. Yellow ochre it's... and in there and yep. little Prussian blue and just all <laughs> different kinds. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, um, that's what I think those were all my questions for you. Um, I always ask people if they have any questions for you that they might like to ask you. Uh, so it'll usually take a minute or two. If people want to ask a question besides Emily. She already asked her question, but, <laughs> but you can ask another one, Emily, if you want. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and while we wait, I'll, I'll just show my painting again for those who might not have seen it. Um, yeah, so uh, I do, in addition to uh, lots of other things, I do do pet portraits. And so this one is pretty well along the way. Um, this is, a, these matter of fact, these little guys, they're not with us anymore, but they did live in Florida. So um, the original picture was of them in a kitchen, um, and I didn't like the picture. So I, instead, I, uh, we made them at the beach. So two dogs at the beach. And, um, you know, talking about mixing colors, you know, like I, here's the, you know, you're trying to mix, there's a brown dog, but there's just about every color under the sun in a brown dog. So it's super, super fun. And, uh, and behind my, my dogs is what I'm doing on Friday, which is I'm actually doing a kid's live picture. Let's just pick it up here. There we go. And so this is, this call is called an Astrodon. And this is Astrodon J Johnsani, which was, is the state <laughs> the state dinosaur of Maryland. Isn't that great? It was uh, it was found. It was originally found not far from here. And so uh, I'm going to have some fun with the kids on Friday, um, making my my Astrodon. So that's what I've been working for. Um, you did have a question, and the question was, "What is your favorite size?" brush to use oh wow um so when i'm painting with oil paints my favorite go-to brushes are filberts um, mm -hmm. they've got like a it, it's kind of a flat i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show the people yeah oh, 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 but but wait where is it one of my filberts here handy here's a filbert there we go so it's yeah, flat, but it's got a rounded edge to it. And yes. I use that a lot to soften my edges where you see that contrast between the light and the dark, the, the sunlight and the shadow. Um, yes. Lay those two areas down and then soften it by putting that brush down the middle where they meet. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, my favorite watercolor brush to use is this one right here. It's a Winsor Newton squirrel hair brush. Ooh. Yeah. And oh, it looks, it almost looks like a Sumi E brush. Right. And um, it is similar to that. It's, it's um, made out of squirrel hair. I think the Sumi brushes are made out of maybe horse or a combination. But yeah. Sumis have two different kinds of hair. Right. They have squirrel in the middle and I think they have horse hair on the outside. Right. And That's what helps bring it to the point. Right. And this one is just squirrel hair. And when you dip it in water, it comes to such a fine point. Yeah. It's you can nice. see that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my go-to brush because it, it holds a lot of paint. So you're not constantly dipping it back and forth and back and forth and you're, you're yes, that's excellent. Yeah. That's good. That's a, that's a really good watercolor brush. Yeah. <laughs> now. Yeah. Cause, and, and the nice thing about watercolors is you can use those natural hair brushes 
That's the only thing with acrylic paints. Natural hair brushes and acrylic paints do not go together because they're just too easy to gum them up. And so instead, um, I w like when I'm doing my paintings, most of mine are actually with synthetic brushes. Yeah. The synthetic I, brushes I'm, wash I'm, a lot better. I, I'm bad. I, um, <laughs> I love my soft sable hair brushes. Um, so when, I, when I'm painting um, really fine, fine detail and I want something really soft, in oils, I'll just go mm -hmm. ahead and use them. And and I have I have my a couple of brands. That I, I have my go tos there. Yeah, and, uh, I'll just order them by the dozen. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go. Because you can you can get a really beautiful point right. that you can't, right. um, and a soft point that is really hard to get with the right. um, with with some of the synthetic brushes. Although they do make some pretty nice ones. If you spend a little extra money, <laughs> yes, you'll you'll get nicer brushes. Yes. This this is not an expensive brush that I'm holding right yeah. now, I but they're really good. Th th too. This is a good brush for starting the painting with. Yeah, you know, like I start the painting with big brushes, and then you get smaller as you go. Matter of fact, my brush, I was just painting, but I was when I was painting with these little guys. This this is this is the brush I was using, oh. which is uh, you know like a number three studio. This, this one, I think, I'm not sure if it's synthetic or natural hair. It's soft, though. It's very, it's very soft. Yeah. And, and this is only an 8x8 eight eight painting, so you, you need to use small brushes right. to get them done. <laughs> yeah. Those little doggy faces you can't do no. with a brush like this. Unless it was foot by 8 foot painting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Laura said she's she's the same. I, I'm not sure if that's the same that she likes a natural or same like she does. She probably uses the same brushes as I do because she um, she uses acrylics, and then she and then she likes to use ink on on her acrylics. So interesting oh, cool. that she does some of that outlining and things. She'll also use um, right. pen, she'll actually use pens to do it and little dots and stuff like that. It's very fun. It's very graphic. She has a right. nice graphic style. Super fun. Yeah. All righty. Well, I think we have done all of her questions. Yeah. I don't see any new ones being asked. And um, I'd like to thank you, Maria, for, for being on my show. Hello, you're and welcome. Thanks for work. inviting me. It was really great. It was really great to talk to you. Yeah. I've been following you for, I don't know, maybe a year or something now. Uh -huh. And I just always enjoy your work. It makes me long for being in Jensen Beach. Well, <laughs> like you paint places I've been, you know, like, oh, the little cottages. I love the little cottages. Um, well, and uh, next time you're in the area. <laughs> I, I definitely will. Yeah, trust me. I'll, I'll be down some point. Who knows what year it's going to be, oh, know. you know, the non-COVID year. <laughs> I'm actually going to Florida next week. But we're we're going to be up in Daytona Beach oh, okay. because we're dropping my son off at college. So that's, that's right. It's my next amazing little uh, time of life. Oh, so well you've gotten people thanking you, and and I thank you, and uh, good luck with everything as you keep going. And we'll just be in contact on Instagram, All keep right. commenting on your work, and. Uh, thank you. Thank see where you go with it. It was fun. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.